From his unlikely status as a revolutionary player to the way his success somehow got him even more critics, here's the real reason Larry Bird was hated. The hick from French Lick has had an enormous impact on the game, but his status as a revolutionary was actually pretty unlikely. Look, everyone remembers Larry's legendary run in the 80s, cause it helped the Boston Celtics clinch three championship titles. But you've gotta understand, he was in the shadow of some actual goats during his career. For starters, he was up against Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson, so people often ignored him in favor of flashier players. You have to admit, the way he played the game changed it forever. The Celtics became serious contenders under his leadership, and even if you look at him as an individual player, the guy was versatile to say the least. In fact, some might even call him the greatest forward of all time. You see, Larry showed that forwards could score tons of points while still leading the court. He always knew when to pass the ball instead of trying to score himself. And that's a level of basketball IQ that just wasn't all that common in his era. He was a major contributor to the popularization of three-pointers, which are kind of like the bread and butter of attacking play nowadays. So why would anyone hate the guy if he did so well? For starters, Shaquille O'Neal hated him because he just seemed like an ordinary guy, which made it all the more surprising that he dominated the court so comprehensively. He never got the chance to play against Bird, but he was still super jealous of him. In his own words, he used to think that Larry got his wins through pure luck. But over time, he started to see how much skill he brought to the table. He feels like that's a testament to Larry's true greatness. Because it takes someone truly special to carve out a place in basketball history, especially while playing at the same time as MJ and Magic Johnson. Shaq's not the only person who gave Bird his begrudging respect. Ice Cube's also gone on the record to say he hated him, mostly because of how he made life difficult for Magic Johnson and the Lakers. Cube's a diehard fanboy, so he's stuck with his favorite team through thick and thin. And as a famous celebrity, his opinions on the Lakers' performance always made headlines. Needless to say, Cube was not too happy about Bird giving his team a run for their money, but even he had to admit that there was something special about the legend. Now, this technically isn't the kind of hate we're talking about here. So are there any examples of someone genuinely disliking him? Yes, much of it has to do with Larry's legendary trash talk. It's one thing to aim your razor tongue at opposing players, but a lot of people felt like Larry went too far when he trash talked coaches. Like this one time he tore into Hubie Brown, saying that the Knicks had no one that could go toe to toe with him. Celtics fans obviously loved his antics, but others said that it was kind of disrespectful. The jury's still out on that, of course, but Larry's love for trash talk won him some serious enemies. There comes a point when your trash talk starts to seem like arrogance, and no one likes a player who's full of himself. In retrospect, it seems obvious that Bird will rank among the greatest players of all time, but in the 1980s, his legacy was not quite cemented. A bunch of players were not too pleased when he talked down to them. And over the years, a consensus started forming that Bird was overrated. Case in point, Dennis Rodman. Back in 1987, Bird helped the Celtics defeat the Pistons in the playoffs, and Rodman infamously claimed that Larry only won three MVPs because he was white. You might think that he was just upset about getting beaten, but plenty of other players echoed his sentiments, like Isaiah Thomas of the Charlotte Hornets. He acknowledged that Bird was a fine player, but he went on to say that if he was black, he'd just be another guy on the court. Admittedly, he'd be a very impressive player regardless of his race. But their main point was that Bird got a ton of accolades because of his ethnicity, and that a black player with equal stats would have been called mediocre. I feel like Josh Levin summarized it best in 2005 when he published an article discussing how Bird had become the NBA's great white hope. If you take a look at some of basketball's greatest players, Bird sticks out like a sore thumb, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out why. Levin pointed out that every white player since Larry's debut has been compared to him, and most of the time, it's only because they share an ethnicity. Like, remember when people tried to call Adam Morrison the next Larry Bird? That's just one of the countless mediocre white players he's been associated with. So it kind of makes sense that people would hate Bird in the aftermath, even if he never asked for all these parallels to be drawn. Larry's stats are comparable to Clyde Drexler, Antoine Walker, and Kevin Garnett. But his race seemingly compels commentators to bring up Troy Murphy and Danny Ferry instead. 
Like, ML Carr even had the audacity to say that Eric Montross was Birdman's successor. What's that? You've never heard of the guy? Exactly. You can see what I'm getting at here, right? Bird's the single white face in a sea of talented black players. And can you blame others for hating the vaguely racist rhetoric he inspired? After all, black players faced extreme prejudice for much of the sport's history. The NBA was founded in 1946, but the league was segregated until 1950, when Earl Lloyd, Chuck Cooper, and Nat Clifton finally broke out of the Harlem Globetrotters they began to dominate the NBA almost instantly. Over the next few decades, white players struggled to reach the same heights as their black counterparts. Don't get me wrong, there have been plenty of Caucasian players who had respectable careers, like John Stockton, Kevin Love, and Dirk Nowitzki to name a few. But do you want to know who the undisputed king of white players is? That's right, Larry Bird. And saying that he's on another level is an understatement. Once again, I'm not trying to hate on Bird for no reason. His leadership of the Celtics deserves all the praise it gets, and there's a reason why so many think of him as a GOAT. But at the same time, I have to wonder, would he have gotten as much acclaim if he was black? Maybe, maybe not. Let's take a look at his stats to get a better idea. In 1981, Birdman scored about 15 points per game, with an accuracy of about 42%. That dragged the Celtics' offensive rating to 106 from 108, and they were lucky that the Rockets posted a rating of 95 that season. Over the next couple of years, Larry's offensive rating was 103 and 102, which is still above average, but not exactly GOAT numbers, you feel me? What's more, his TS hovered around the 47% mark. That doesn't exactly scream legend in my book. I could go on and on about how Bird's stats don't measure up to his status, but in the end, the fans think he's one of the best, and most other players clearly agree. Before I get dogpiled, I know that stats aren't everything, especially when viewed in a vacuum. The reason I'm bringing them up is to show that Rodman, Thomas, and Levin all made a good point. Bird was a good player, even a great player, but you can't just ignore the way his race might have shaped his legacy. In the end, it really seemed like the more successful Bird got, the more hate he received. And now y'all know why. Like, part of the Birdman legend is that he didn't have any help from his genes, which references a racist notion that black people are somehow innately stronger than white people, and that this gives them an unfair advantage on the court. Like, were folks really trying to imply that he became a world-class athlete purely through hard work? Come on. Of course, his DNA helped him out just like it does with every other great athlete out there. As awesome as he was, Bird sort of became a way for the NBA to deal with its racial inferiority complex, and countless journalists, players, and coaches stood up and took note of that. Even Bird himself hated that every white player was compared to him, because he felt like it took his own unique legacy out of the equation. So from the way his success only brought him more haters, to his unlikely status as a revolutionary player, this was the real reason Larry Bird was hated.